Hey, y'all. One of the things that is potentially funny, but also potentially sad, is that after however many months I've been on BookTube, I'm still not totally sure how to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Kenya. This is my channel. So I thought my video today would be about the books I just bought from Barnes & Noble when I shouldn't have even taken my ass in there. <laughs> I also got a book from Amazon. I love Amazon even though they're kind of the devil um, because I can hear about something, click a couple buttons, and then it's at my house so quickly afterwards. So somebody was talking about this book. Um, I think I saw it on Bookstagram. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfi. I don't know. So it's about a woman who goes into an assisted coma, basically. She is purposefully unconscious for about a year. The shocking and strangely tender story of a young woman's efforts to duck the ills of the world with the help of one of the worst psychiatrists in the annals of literature. That sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> Both tender and blackly funny, merciless and compassionate, My Year of Rest and Relaxation is a powerful answer to that question and a showcase for the gifts of one of our major writers working at the height of her power. Oh, the question is, it's the year 2000 in a city aglitter with wealth and possibility. What could possibly be so terribly wrong? So I just got that one from Amazon. I think I saw somebody review it and love it on Bookstagram. And I did a little click, 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 click. And it was in a box with lots of other things I didn't need almost immediately. So that was awesome. And then yesterday I left work a little bit early, although I went back to work afterwards, uh, because I had to go to the bank. And the bank I had to go to was um, right across the street from a really awesome Barnes and Noble. What is that? <laughs> I'm a mess. And so I went into the Barnes and Noble to get Starbucks, of course, and just to look around, just to look around. And instead of just looking around, I bought several books because they currently have their buy one, get one half off mix and match. So uh, they had the table set up right as you walk in. And I should have just held strong and gone straight to the coffee, um, but I didn't. I looked around and I got, of course, because they're buy one, get one half off, four books. And I was also gonna get The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because it was on the, you know, the hardcover shelf that usually faces the Barnes & Noble when you walk in. And I was going to grab that one. And then I turned and saw the buy one, get one half off and forgot to grab it. So I'll have to go in for coffee again, probably not this week. I got to get through some books before I buy anything else. I have to. I also got an ampersand bag. I love ampersands. They're my favorite symbol because everyone should have one. Semicolons would be my second favorite symbol. So I love a bag. Last thing I needed in the world. So one book I got, it's got the little sticker. The nice thing about the Barnes & Noble sticker though, the in-store stickers are that they come off smooth as butter. And you just take it off and then you have a perfectly unblemished book. So this is Alyssa Cole's first thriller. She usually writes romance. I've read at least one romance, maybe two by her. I've seen so much great things about when no one is watching and I'm excited to have it in my clutchy paws. I will read just a couple of lines in case you've never heard of this book because you've been living under a rock. Sydney Green is Brooklyn born and raised, but her beloved neighborhood seems to change every time she blinks. Condos are sprouting up like weeds, 
for sale signs are popping up overnight and the neighbors she's known all her life are disappearing. Blah, 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 blah. But Sydney and Theo's deep dive into history quickly becomes a dizzying descent into paranoia and fear. Their neighbors may not have moved to the suburbs after all, and the push to revitalize the community may be more deadly than advertised. <laughs> Love it. Love her. There she is, looking like a beautiful golden queen on the back. So excited about that. Not going to get to it anytime soon because another book I got, The Merciful Crow. I think this one might be a little bit older, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen much about it lately, although I did see a little bit. I remember seeing the cover on some lists of things that were coming out when it came out. I'm hoping actually that it's not a sequel because I didn't check and I do that sometimes where I pick up a book because I'm excited and have heard some things and don't realize that it's part of a series. Let's hope not. A future chieftain, a fugitive prince, a too cunning bodyguard, and one grumpy gray tabby. That is A Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. Let's see. Fi abides by one rule. Look after your own. As a future chieftain of a shunned cast of mercy killers, she relies on her wits and bone magic, drawn from the teeth of dead witches to protect her band. The crows take more abuse than coin, so when they're called to collect the royal dead, Fi hopes they'll find the payout of a lifetime. Uh. Ooh, somebody's faked their death to get away from people. Mm. And the crown prince offers a deal that she can't refuse. Make sure he lives to see the throne and he'll protect the crows when he reigns. So I'm gonna guess there's a little bit of espionage and um, loyalties that are misplaced and all kinds of awesome YA goodness in this one. Excited about it. The monthly pick at Barnes & Noble this month was The Witch Hunter by Max Seek. Sticker came right off. A shocking murder in an affluent Helsinki suburb has ties to witchcraft and the occult in this thrilling U.S. debut from Finnish author Max Seek. A best-selling author's wife has been found dead in a gorgeous black evening gown, sitting at the head of an empty dining table. Her most chilling feature, her face is frozen in a ghastly smile. Ooh, I got the shutters. I freaked myself out. I'm excited about this one. Max is a little bit of a cutie pootie. Bodies start piling up. Mmm. Ooh, she has a dark past, of course. Of course there's a dark past. The Witch Hunter by Max Seek. Bought that off the table. And then finally, last but certainly not least, a book that I have actually checked out of the library twice and returned because I checked them checked it out at a bad time for trying to read a million books all at one time. Anger is a Gift by Mark, I think his name is Mark, yeah, Mark Oshiro. Adam Silvera, who I also love, says, a beautiful and brutal debut. Sounds like I'm going to cry like a baby. A manly baby, of course, but a baby nonetheless. Moss Jeffries is many things. Considerate student, devoted son, loyal friend, and affectionate boyfriend enthusiastic nerd, but sometimes Ma still wishes he could be someone else, someone without panic attacks, someone whose father were still alive, someone who hadn't become a rallying point for a community because of one horrible night. Do, do, do. Mm. Something will have to change, but who will listen to a group of teens? When tensions hit a fever pitch and tragedy, tragedy strikes again, Moss 
must face a difficult choice. Give in to fear and hate or realize that anger can actually be a gift. So this has lots of things I love to read about. Empowered teens for one and a realization that our feelings matter and are valid and can be motivating. So right up my alley. Again, I've checked it out a bunch of times and I'm hoping that owning it will help me to read it rather than checking it out again. So I'm excited about that. And then the other little thing I got that I didn't need was the tiny little Snape as a Bogart pop keychain. So I'm excited to decide where to put it. I, I'm not sure. I have a lot of backpacks and a lot of bags and a lot of places I could hang a Snape as a Bogart. Speaking of feelings and using them in important ways, um, think about um, this scene in Harry Potter where Neville is terrified of Snape because Snape is a terrible and terrifying adult for kids um, in his care. And the way that Neville is able to find the power to see Snape in his grandmother's clothes. And it's totally ridiculous. <laughs> and I love it so much. I love the hat. All right. Catch you on the next one.